So, we are studying linear algebra in a nutshell. And let's make sure I can, I can start writing in a place that uh, is actually going to show up. So we're doing linear algebra in a nutshell. Now this is um, another piece of, of stuff that came from Dr. Strang. And it's not in the Strang book that we're using. I, I actually came out of another uh, linear algebra textbook that he wrote. Uh, but, but the basic idea here is that A is a square, square n by n matrix. Now we've been talking about um, m by n or n by m, in which case we can uh, not say as much as we can say in this case where uh, A is square. So we have two situations that we, that we um, are studying. We can, we can make statements about singular matrices and we can make statements about matrices that are not singular or non-singular. Let's start out with the non-singular case. Uh, so for non-singular matrix, and let's do, it, let's do it in the following way. Remember, what I want you to learn here, the thing that I'm trying to have you do is learn how to read mathematical statements and be able to make conclusions about what those statements say uh, based on your own internal work. There should be an internal dialogue that you have going on inside your, your head, um, borrowing that language from Dr. Gorski here, uh, in which you are reading about math, you're reading mathematical statements, and you're trying to figure out what it is that that really means. So you're trying to turn this statement from a jumble of words into a real um, understanding of what's going on. Remember, the mathematical thinking that we do the, the, the part of the brain that I have to understand math with is not the same as the part of the brain that makes language. And so much of what we're doing is taking the basic intrinsic mathematical ability that we all have, that dogs have when they're chasing fris frisbees, for example, and be able to express that in, um, in language so that other people can understand what we're talking about. So that's the plan. Okay, so I want to talk about non-singular matrices and already um, there is a, a first idea for non-singular matrices. And again, linear algebra in a nutshell, linear algebra in a nutshell. I was also told to speak more slowly, so I'm going to try to do that now too. Linear algebra in a nutshell is really a theorem. And the theorem of linear algebra in a nutshell, which you should have in front of you on paper right now, it's the piece of paper that I gave you, is given in the form of a bunch of equivalent statements. So, for non-singular matrices, we have statements like A is invertible. That's the same as the column of, columns of A are independent, or the rows of A are independent. The determinant of A is not zero. AX equals zero has one solution, and the only solution that AX equals zero had, has is the trivial solution, X equals zero itself. AX equals B has exactly one solution for any B. A has N non-zero pivots. Remember, A is an N by N matrix. A has full rank, R equals N. Remember what rank is? Okay, stop, pause me, and remind yourself what rank is in case you don't remember it. I'm back on after your pause. Rank is the dimension of the column space or the row space of A. What's the dimension? The dimension is the number of basis vectors that are in those spaces. What's a basis vector? A basis vector is an element of the basis. What's a basis? A basis is a set of vectors that are independent and that span the space. Um, the reduced row echelon form of, of uh, A is the identity matrix, which means that I can get to the identity matrix by uh, Gauss elimination steps. The column space of A is all of Rn. The row space of A is all of Rn and all the eigenvalues are non-zero. Now the last two statements, A transpose A is symmetric positive definite. Well, we actually showed that once, uh, but I'm not going to worry about positive semi-definite as the other thing. And then A has uh, N positive singular values. We're not going to talk about singular values. In fact, I don't even know about singular values myself. So we're not, that's not going to come into this discussion. Okay, so I've just stated all the equivalent terms for a non-singular n by n matrix, a non-singular square matrix. All those terms mean the same thing. If you can say one is true, if you can prove one of those, those uh, statements is true, then it follows from this theorem, which you're not proving, 
but it follows from this theorem that all those statements are true. Cool. Now, what you need to do is actually make some sense out of this, because you've got to learn these. You've got to learn all these, what, 13 statements or 12 statements. How are you going to put these together? And how are you going to make it work so that you, if it came down to it, you could actually draw some conclusions about things that you would have to do? Now, the best way to do that is to actually make yourself up a little example. Now, the good news is that I'm sitting behind a door right now, and the door is closed. Nobody can see me, so as a good mathematician, I can sit down and I can play with some simple examples. Here's the example I'm going to do, and this is the example that I worked out last time that hopefully you're not going to lose. The example is, I wonder how this is going to work. This is not working very well. Okay, damn, I had that over and now I'm going to lose it. Huh, what am I, oh, problem. Okay, well, I moved the title. And uh, this is something that, that we're going to learn in the future. I'm going to learn how to do this. Let's take A as an example matrix, um, 2 by 2 matrix, 1, 2, 0, 1. Okay. The first statement is, is this A invertible? So 1. If A is a non-singular matrix, let's, this is a non-singular case, A is invertible. A is invertible. I'm going to try to write big enough that you can see, uh, but not so big that I don't have any room to work with. Now, what does invertible mean? Stop, pause, ask yourself what invertible means. You have paused, and the thing that you should have discovered was that invertible means that A inverse exists. So what's the best way to show that A inverse exists for this A? Let's just compute the inverse. Well, we went through this last time, too, and uh, we're going to find out if I go through the process of computing A inverse, I'm going to find out that uh, A inverse can be written this way. as 1, negative 2, 0, 1. Let's go ahead and just prove to ourselves that that is the inverse. So I'm going to, and how am I going to prove to myself that that's the inverse? I'm going to write down A times A inverse. 1, 2, 0, 1. I'm going to multiply that by 1 minus 2, 0, 1. And I'm going to check that, see what the answer is. So I'm going to have 1 times 1 plus 2 times 0 is 1 in the upper left. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2 plus 2 times 1 is 0 in the upper right. 1 times 0 plus uh, 1 times 0 is going to be 0 in the lower left. And negative 2 times 0 plus 1 times 1 is 1 in the lower right. So A inverse does work. I'm going to leave it to you. Exercise. You compute A inverse times A. All right, cool. We have, if A is a non-singular matrix, that means that A inverse exists. A is invertible. OK. Step two, the columns of A are independent. The columns of A are independent. Make the statement, columns of A are independent. Wow, my handwriting is getting better. This is good. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and pull off this, uh, this last piece of paper to reveal um, A transpose in case we're ever going to need that. So I'm going to go poof, and there's A transpose. Look at that. Man, that was pretty spiffy, getting my uh, graphical act together here. So moving. Statement 2 right up to the top. Remember, we're talking about non-singular matrices, and we're working with an example uh, of this A matrix, 1, 2, 0, 1. Cool? Okay, stay with me. 